Hello everybody, I'm very excited today because I have a very amazing guest for you. Uh, he's commonly known as the brand uh, doctor. Uh, he runs the brand doctor podcast. His name is Hen Henry K K Kaminsky Jr. You got and, it. Um, yes, and um, one thing that I have in common with this guest is we both very passionate about branding. I'm crazy about branding. He's also crazy about branding. And I believe it's still morning in, in, in New York. Good morning, Henry, and I'm very excited to have you here. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate uh, being on the show. Definitely. Thank you. And, um, you know, most people don't understand what uh, branding is. Can you give me uh, an, a definition, your own definition of what branding is? Absolutely. So branding is that gut feeling you get when you interact with either a person or a product or service or another business. So it's branding is all about feeling. It's that desired perception that you want somebody else to get after interacting with you. Definitely, that's that's a very spot on definition and I like that. And um, you know, as, as you know that I'm in South Africa, I'm, I'm from Africa and in particular South Africa, uh, most, most people uh, actually have this idea of humility, thinking that humility is this thing where you when you're not you're supposed to be a ghost, you're supposed to be a no-name brand without uh, you know people not knowing who you are and what you're what you're all about. Uh, what do you think about? Um, do you think that branding is for everybody? Uh, is it for people that are not running businesses? Is it for people that are also running businesses? What What's your opinion on that? I think whether we like it or not. Um, we are branding ourselves every single day just by living and breathing. I mean, the way you uh, communicate uh, to another individual, the way you communicate with another business, the way you present yourself, the clothes that you wear, the food that you like, the music that you like, this is all part of your branding. See, each and every one of us are a brand. We're a personal brand. And one of the things that I see a lot of people messing up is that they're not staying true to self. And when you're not staying true to self, you can't stay true to brand. And there's where the disconnect is. And at the end of the day, I think it just comes down to the fear of uh, being judged, the fear of being um, made fun of, the fear of all these different things. But we have to understand that, you know, that is doing not only yourself a disservice, but it's doing your audience a disservice too, or the people you hang around with a disservice as well, uh, because people want to feel connected with confidence. They want to feel connected to safety. And think about it. I'm going to ask you and your audience a question. You know, what drives you to certain individuals? What drives you to certain brands? It's the confidence that they project and it's that feeling that they they give you that makes you feel empowered or makes you feel like they're leveling up your status in your life. And when I mean status, I don't mean, you know, uh, the watch or the clothes or the cars. I think what's going to make tomorrow easier. And I think that is a big, big thing that people need to pay attention to is Embrace your brand, embrace what you love, embrace what you hate, and don't worry about what other people think so much. That's, that's very profound. And you, you spoke about staying true to yourself, which speaks to the core of what you really stand for, what you really stand for. Uh, let me ask you a very personal question. What do you stand for, Henry? <laughs> in, in, impact. You know, in, impact and trying to make this world a better place. You know, when you can make this world a better place, if you can empower somebody and lift them up, make them better, give them some thinking that they probably never thought about before and just make them feel better about themselves, they're gonna do way better inside of their business and brand 
And so I just want to level people up. That's, that's, that's very true. And your, your impact has definitely reached South Africa. And I'm a product of that. Uh, from from uh, your your weekly podcast, at your weekly uh, podcast, I was just having a conversation with you before when I was telling you that it's my weekly ritual, and I make sure that I I, I get to listen to your podcast. And um, you know, you how do you get so much attention? How do you manage to 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 get attention? That's a great point. So there's two ways that I that I manage to uh, attract an audience, and. One is being very consistent with my presence. You know, think about it, Tyrone. If you listened to one of my podcasts and you liked it, and then you were excited to hear about the next one or listen to the next one and it didn't come out for three weeks, and then you got a taste of the second one, you really like that one, and that one came out the next day, and then you got that, and then you had to wait. See that inconsistency? That would be so frustrating to you. You would be like, I'm out of here. I need consistency in my life. I need certainty in my life f- for me to actually uh, connect with something. So consistency, getting out there and embracing my my beliefs, my values, right? Not being wishy-washy and standing for something, drawing that line dead in the sand saying, this is what I love, this is what I hate and not being afraid to communicate that, that's one. Number two, It's, I just had it off the top of my head. Oh, being very creative with it. So, excuse me, I had to drink a little water here. Um, Being creative with it. So a lot of people are just mimicking their competition or mimicking other people. And what happens when you do that is you just become another me too brand, you know? So what differentiates you from someone else? You know, so I like to change things up a little bit, like on my podcasts. Um, I try to go for the jugular inside of my podcast where I ask, I ask my guests when I do have them on the show, what's that one thing that bothers you so much about your industry? And what are you so passionate about tackling to overcome this or to defeat this pet peeve of yours, right? That brings out a lot of emotion in people. And that's why those guest podcasts go like 45 minutes because they just keep talking, (laughs) you know, because they're very passionate about what it is that they love to do. And so, so putting that sort of spin on things, um, hitting them from different angles, right? There's a, there's a concept called omnipresence and, and the concept of omnipresence means, um, the feeling you give, to someone that makes you feel like you're everywhere. So, you know, if you, if you go to my Instagram, if you go to Facebook, if you go to LinkedIn, if you go to, uh, YouTube, um, if you go to iTunes, like you will find me. And so when you spread your presence out across many different platforms, um, that will allow you to attract an audience. And the last thing that I don't want to forget is, Um, really understanding my audience and what their needs, wants, and desires are and talking to that every single day. And what that does is that creates relevancy. It creates a connection. I had, uh, I had a podcast guest on, on Saturday and we were talking about, and he's in the comic book industry and I said, and he's a, he's an awesome storyteller. And I said, what is the biggest thing about storytelling that will make a break a comic or make a break a connection with your audience and he said the relationship the audience has with the character if they can't see themselves inside the character there's an there's a disconnect and so relevancy is super important people will be drawn to you for years and years to come if they can connect with you on some relevant way and this is very true i always talk about it's 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 more important to be relevant than to be famous because most people seek out to be famous and as opposed to be relevant. Uh, there are many people that used to, that are famous but not relevant. And a perfect example is that is um, when you look at, okay, I don't know if you know Soulja Boy, the rapper. Of course. He's very famous, but at the moment he's rather irrelevant as compared to the people that are relevant at the moment, which is something that most people don't focus on. 
And um, the next question that I have to ask you is, I always get this a lot where people come out and communicate to their audience or to the world that uh, I'm the world's number world's number one sales expert. I'm the world's number one, um, you know, at, at, at marketing expert. And what, many of the times, these people are not actually the world's number one. And they're coming out and communicating that they're the world's number one. And the question that I always have is, what makes you global? What makes you that? What makes you to be that, that, that type of person that you, that you say you are? And many people fail to answer me. Uh, in your own opinion, do you, do you believe in faking it till you make it? No, I don't. And I, I've, I've lived that. I, I lived that for a while, and I understand why. It, and here's why it doesn't work. Eventually, the truth catches up to you. Definitely. Okay. And so you can't fake it till you make it because eventually the truth will shine and you will be revealed. Okay. So one of the things that I like to do is I don't like to, um, I don't like to claim myself as a branding expert. I don't like to claim myself as the number one of anything. Cause I know I'm not. Okay. Mm -hmm. One thing that I am though, um, is very passionate about people. I'm very passionate about branding. I'm very passionate about design. Um, I'm very passionate about taking people from uh, uh, this level here and bringing them up a, a couple notches, you know, to a more uh, enhanced look and feel or an enhanced way of living, right? Um, and But that's what I, I believe that if you invest in yourself, great things will happen. I just happen to be somebody who is very passionate about branding and stays very consistent with understanding and learning about branding. Um, and that's what people are attracted to. So understanding that people will buy why, and this comes from Simon Sinek, I didn't make this up, but people yeah. will buy your why before they buy your what or your how. And so I go out there every day before I go live and I say to myself, uh, is what I'm about to say in line with my values? Will this help someone that is listening enhance their brand identity, their presence, their messaging? And that's how I position myself. So uh, I wouldn't recommend you fake it till you make it. I, I would recommend that you stay very consistent and narrow with whatever it is that you love to do. So the biggest problem, Tyrone, is people are trying to be everything to everyone and it dilutes your subject matter expertise. So what I would recommend is you stay extremely narrow with what it is that you're really, really good at and just be a free, be a forever student. So consistently learn new things about the industry and apply them and say, how can I help my audience do this? So th if there's one thing that I would want your audience to take away from this, this call or this live or this podcast, whatever you decide to do with it is focus and ask yourself, who do I truly want to serve? And then learn everything you possibly can about that individual and then go in and start creating products or services that will help them. Wow, wow. That's, this is amazing. Now, you, just to add on to what you just said, and I, I also believe that it's, it's always better when people say it if people say that you're the world's best, then is opposed to you coming out and saying that I'm the best at this. And um, you spoke about uh, having a narrow focus uh, briefly. You no, know, you, have you ever had the statement, uh, check of all trades and master of none? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's something which is very common, I find, with people where they try uh, like a, a broad approach on their on, the, on their branding and they try to focus on doing this and this and this and this and this and this and, this and that uh, can you just go deeper or, or in terms of narrowing down your focus and how people can just focus on that one thing and they can be known for that one thing but as i'll give an example um with you um 
if you're to think about branding, you know, it's your thing. You know, it's that one thing that we can talk about. Design, everything, we can talk about that. So can you just uh, help me narrow that down? Yeah, so if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're asking me how to narrow that focus down? Yes. Okay, uh, so one of the things is, if you want to get tactical, we can get tactical. One of the things that I do with my clients is I create a client brief. And basically I do a lot of front front end discovery with that client. So when I'm helping a client build a brand, I go through seven, sometimes 10 hours of discovery calls with them, similar to this, very virtual. Um, it's either through Skype or Blue Jeans, they're recorded. And I am trying to learn and immerse myself into their brand to find out what it is that they're truly passionate about and find that ideal customer persona. And what I typically do in with all my clients is there's typically three different types of clients that people like to interact with. And so what I do with my is I we define me and the client actually define who their end users are, okay? And that gets really, really specific and really, really narrow. And now we, we actually put names to them. Like uh, I'm working with a client right now who's, a, who's an executive coach, um, who's a, is a business coach. And we, we realized that he has three different types of client. He has Tiny Tim, he's got Mr. Ego Man, and he's got Lazy Susan. And they all have different demographics they all have different um, stories and backgrounds. They all have different goals, all different needs, different solutions. Uh, and we have different solutions for each one of them. And so on identifying who that is and really talking specifically to them, everything becomes easier. See, when you try to talk to thousands of people, it's very hard to narrow your messaging. But when you can talk to one person, it makes your messaging very, very simple. Why? Because now I know what Tiny Tim needs in his life, and I know the, the exact solution that I need to provide him. And the same thing goes for the other two types, uh, user types or um, uh, user personas. So that's how you narrow down who it is that you want to serve. And so it all comes down to you, Tyrone, like you're in charge of your brand. You're in charge of it. And so you can enjoy working with certain people or you can absolutely hate working with certain people. So it really comes down to you. And that's the greatest thing about branding is you have 100% control over it on your end where you could say, listen, I don't wanna help those types of people. I wanna help this type of person. And then you just go all in. And I, I can hear it now because I've gotten it a lot and I've struggled with it too myself. Um, you say to yourself, well, I might be missing out. The, 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 mm -hmm. the FOMO sets in, right? The fear of yeah. missing out sets in. Well, if I focus in on just tiny Tim's, what about Johnny and Sally and Bob, you know, or small businesses? Well, you just said to me that you really love working with tiny Tim's. So, mm -hmm. What are you worried about missing that? Like there's plenty of tiny Tims in the world that you can serve. So it's that limited belief. It's that fear of missing out that you just need to eliminate because it's going to, it's going to dilute your messaging and really make it hard for you to market your business and brand in the future. Wow, man, this is, this is amazing. Um, you know, a lot of people say that your brand is not just your logo which is true. Uh, when you look at um, Steve Jobs, for instance, you know, when you look at everything that he did with Apple, he put a lot of focus, um, the same amount of focus on the design aspect of the product as much as um, the same amount of time he put on the, on, the, on the chips that were inside. And I believe that, okay, do you believe that uh, design can also, can also evoke some sort of emotional reaction towards um, um, a brand? Absolutely. Uh, there's a study out there that says 80% of buying decision actually comes from the color 
of the wow. of the product or service that you're delivering or the color of the brand. And so uh, when you when you focus on color, understanding the way you design uh, a color identity for a brand isn't oh, I like the color purple, so I'm going with purple today. <laughs> it's it's what does that color purple represent? And you could just google color psychology and you'll find dozens of charts and examples and right so what you need to understand is looking at what certain colors represent and the value that's subliminally behind them and asking yourself now does that color or align with my audience's values because subconsciously purple i i i roll with purple i love purple personally but i also picked it because I'm creative and it represents creativity. It represents royalty. I like the finer things in life. Not calling myself royalty, but it represents yeah. it represents royalty. And the clients that I serve are typically uh an existing business that has a business that's doing decent but not as not as good as they want it to be and they want to level up. They want to get to royal status. And so that color purple aligns with their values sub- subconsciously. And that's why I chose purple for my brand. So um there are a ton of design elements. Imagery evokes emotion. And imagery is a huge part of design. It's a huge part of brand, right? If you're an urban uh you know type of brand that's coming out of New York City, you're probably going to go with a lot of brick, a lot of hardscape, a lot of uh you know um very tight corners whereas maybe you're a midwest brand and you work with farmers right your imagery is going to be a lot different than an urban brand so i'm just giving you two extreme examples but there are many different facets and and pillars of branding that you need to understand and i'll give you the pretty much the seven um that you should really pay attention to one is your logo because that is sort of the face of the brand uh one is the imagery one is the design one is the color one is the fonts and typography one is the voice and one is the positioning like you really need to know how to position your brand properly so that the message connects And so those are the 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 pillars of branding that you need to pay attention to because it's not just your logo you're right. Mm. Wow. And uh you spoke about uh color uh, motivating people to buy. Why do customers do? Can you tell me some of the reasons why customers buy the brands they buy? Cuz they have an emotional connection to it. And and that see 90% of what we buy is from is with the heart not the brain. You know, your brain is the logical part, your heart is the emotional part. So 90% of buying decision comes from emotion. We don't buy a Range Rover because it's a we because because it's a a car. I mean, the, it, a Toyota has four wheels, a Range Rover has four wheels. What does a Range Rover do for people? It makes them feel like important. it makes them feel like uh, a level of success you know i have a range rover and i actually wrote an email about it this morning and the reason why i bought my range rover because it's a it's a it's a status symbol and it's a it makes me feel like i've accomplished something with myself and with my business because if my business wasn't doing good i wouldn't be able to afford a range rover so you know every time i get into that truck i say it makes me feel it makes me feel proud it makes me feel powerful it makes me feel and i'm not afraid to ask you know and all of those things may sound so silly to people but that's how it makes me feel i really don't care you know what i'm saying and so people need and i embrace it and my my my, my wife she makes fun of me all the time because she likes the she likes her nice things but she lives a very simplistic life she's like you're the you're the you're the woman in this relationship you know that right <laughs> <laughs> and and i and I, and i tell her and I, and 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 i embrace it and now it, it's become a joke you know um and 
it's just something that I embrace. And, uh, but that's what it comes down to, you know, um, I hope that answered your question. I don't, I don't like to ramble. It, it, it did. It did. Um, I think, um, last question, hopefully, can, uh, we're done already. I could go another hour. You know, let's go. Let's go for it. Uh, what advice would you give somebody who's starting? Let's say somebody starting out to build the brand. How would they start? What's the first step? So uh, find, ask yourself a couple of questions. One is why am I starting this business in the first place? You got to get really clear with that and you got to get really true with yourself uh, with that. If it's a, if it's to get rich, I would invite you to re evaluate um, your thinking and your why and your purpose, right? So uh, identify your why, identify your purpose. The next thing you need to find out is who do you truly want to serve? Okay. And when you're discovering your why and your purpose, that may come out right away, which will kill two birds with one stone, they call it. Right. Then after that, you need the experience. And what I would strongly recommend you do is get your product or service in the hands of as many people as you possibly can. And if that means you got to get out there and sort of do some stuff for free, then go ahead and do it. Why? Because that will give you the experience, the confidence, the wisdom, the understanding to know where your strengths, where your weaknesses are so that you can correct them. Um, it'll also give you the leverage to create case studies and testimonials to then focus that into paid customers. And so okay. you'll market the experience you'll um, you'll market those case studies and the results that you've given those people that you've worked with now those people that are watching they don't know that you did it for free you don't have to be you don't have to tell anybody that who cares right but the point is is you're sh you're starting to now show and prove and we used to throw around and I still throw around that phrase to this day because at the end of the day, it all comes down to showing and proving that you're a subject matter expert, but you're not calling yourself that. People are calling you that. There's a difference. When the market calls you an expert, that's one thing. But if you're calling yourself an expert and you're really not, that's yeah. where your brand crumbles. So that, so, so that's basically the best advice I can give to somebody who's just starting out. Yes, the wait, I know you're going to cringe when you hear me say, get out there and start working for free for people. But honest to God, you got to get your feet wet somehow. Uh, and that's how you do it. But let me not uh, forget this as well. <laughs> Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do is I wouldn't get so focused and so uh, consumed with trying to look at what the competitor next door is doing. I would pay some mind to it, but what I would do is I would look at the master that is dominating that industry, your industry and model what they're doing. That's going to give you a different that's that's going to give you a like like 14 step advantage to the competitor next door because the competitor next door is just doing a little better to, a little better than you at this point you know so if you want to be great you got to model the great the the next door competitor in my opinion is just good so wow that will give you the framework that'll give you because they're obviously achieving that amount of success for a reason. So what you need to do is you need to look deep into what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it and model it, but make it your own, customize it to you, put your spin on it, make it unique. And that's, what's going to make you come out of the gate flying. Wow. And, um, I just, that, that's really amazing. I, I just finished writing my second book which talks about the idea of um, 
building a brand before you start thinking about making money yourselves so building a brand so that you focus on making a difference fo focus on making meaning as opposed to just making money um you know I, do you believe that brands must be uh, better from the inside out or must begin internally everything must begin internally before we um take it out yeah for sure i think it all starts from the inside i think really defining your purpose um is really going to uh, help the brand grow and evolve organically and really build that solid foundation when you know your purpose when you know your why and you're really clear with that and you're not going to deviate from it just because somebody else maybe made fun of it one day right because that's what happens people yeah. will people will get trolled on the internet and they will get so upset about it that they'll they'll still shut their doors and it's so crazy but it, it sounds so extreme but that's what people do and then the doubt sets in and then next thing you know they're they're out of business and so really focusing in on building your confidence investing in yourself investing in your brand defining your purpose and your why start from the inside and then the outside will sort of grow itself and so it's it's, it's great that you you ask some really great questions my friend do <laughs> thank you very much thank you i'm learning from you <laughs> well, you know, it's one it's one thing I heard recently. Um, I was listening to a podcast. I forget where it was, though. But the you know, the power, the true power in brand is in the questions, not the answers. Because when wow. you ask the right questions, you get the right answers. And I can share with you. I share with I share this story a lot. But when I was growing up, I struggled with this a lot because uh, every time I would ask my dad a question in my in my teenage years, right, and he didn't feel like answering it, he would say, "What are you writing a book?" And he would dismiss my answer. He would dismiss my question, and that that really messed with me when I got into my business life because I was afraid to ask questions, and I would dive into projects without getting the information that I needed. And the project would never come out good because I didn't get the full 360 understanding that I needed. And that's why I've been stressing on this whole call that 90% of it, guys, comes from understanding who you are and who you want to serve. And understanding everything about that is going to help you get the right products out there, get the right services out there. Because there's a lot of brands out there that have great ideas and then they go and execute on those ideas and nobody wants it because it's not what they need. It's not what they want. So, Wow. That's very true. Wow. And um, uh, yeah, I, I want to ask this. Henry Kaminsky Jr., five years from now, what do we expect? Oh, man everything to be very, very simplified in my life. Um, it's going to be a simplified version of myself. I live a beautiful life. I really do. And I am truly blessed to have the people in my life, um, to have the things in my life, um, to experience everything in my life. Um, and it's just going to be a very refined and simplified version of what I'm living right now. Um, if you want specifics, it's probably going to be working with less people, uh, making more money. Um, and, but I'm going to spend much more time, uh, doing the things that I love and enjoy the most. And that's traveling with my family, raising my son, uh, you know, just enjoying those little moments because I tell everybody this. Like, life is so short. Life is extremely short. And if we don't pay attention to being present and doing the things that we love to do today, it's going to be gone in two minutes. 
No, I can I can totally relate to that. Uh, I will say that I'm I'm all about living the world that we're living and everybody that I meet in a way better state than when I first got them, when I first met them. You know, I, I want to I want my contribution to, 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 to this earth to be very positive and to have people that will say, you know, this guy, his life uh, contributed in, to my success or where I am today, and um, which, which which is very which is something that I said I can relate to what you just said. Uh, so I can I really can't wait to, to 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 see all the great things that are, that are going to be happening in in your life. Um, next question, one question that I also wanted to ask you is line extension. You know, uh, Alris and Jack Trout they they talk about it as a trap as a trap and uh many people when when they're running a, a very successful brand um they tend to then expand that brand and then uh just try to use the same name and uh for everything so what do you think about uh, line extension do you think that companies succeed when they line extend i think that when they line extend and but they stay true to their values and they can they stay aligned with their purpose right they're gonna win okay they're, they're they will win um what happens is if they extend too far out that's when they run into issues and that's where things start to get really wobbly so what i would do is i would make sure that if you're going to extend make sure that you do it slowly so that you build those different channels and those different lines with with strength first with a solid foundation and that it's aligned with the overall brand value and purpose of of the of the overall business and that's that would be my that would be my suggestion that would be my uh response to that you know my question for you tyrone though i'm going to spin this on you a little bit because I'm, <laughs> I'm curious i'm curious to hear from you you know why you're doing what you're doing and you know why you reached out to me in the first place so it's a two-part <laughs> question it's a two-part question one is what yeah. exact what exactly why are you doing what you're doing okay um so I, I always like to begin with this story. Um, I I fell in love with branding first, firstly, because uh, in in Africa it's something which was not it was not something that everybody knew about. It was just something you know you start a business, you just put a funny name and you just go out there, and people don't really um, didn't really understand this. I do what I do is. The reason why I do what I do is I like to connect people to uh, you connect people between who they are and what they do. You know, so taking a person, you know, helping them and assisting them to connect who they are and what they do, so that they can have global impact, not just uh, local uh, champions. You know, so I'm, uh, I'm I'm all about then developing those people to have global impact, not just um, you know local impact. Uh, you know, go, you know, they say go big or go home. I say go big or, and go global, you know, <laughs> which is, <laughs> you know, and, and, and go global. And which is something that uh, I've seen in my, 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 my personal life. I asked you a question about for that, that I'm, I'm global, number one. When I talk about the stuff that, I, that I'm doing, it's not just talking uh, i've got the results to prove for it i've got uh things to do um things stuff to show for it uh, and to show that this is what i really stand for this is what i'm doing this is what i've done and um why i do what i do is i'm all about impacting inspiring and transforming lives this is what i really i want to impact lives i want to to inspire people I want to see transformation in people's lives. As I said, that I'm all about seeing a living. You can go ahead. Yeah, where did that come from? <laughs> well, it's how 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 do I put it? It's 
it's just something that I was just very passionate about. It's just something that I was very passionate about from an, an early stage, I think from about five years ago. And so I just five started years ago? five years ago, um, or four years ago, my father passed on and things changed and you know you you, you I, I call it like a, 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 when you look at your life from a from from stairs from the top of the stairs and you 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 get to evaluate a lot of things and a lot of uh things about your life and you say okay this is me this is what i want to be about this is what i want to do this is what i want to be this is who i want to become and i just started how i started at the time i was like okay i want to impact at the time it was just young people because we didn't have a lot of young people uh, who were doing great things who, who you know i had to break a lot of uh, things that you know people were telling that oh, you, you need to uh, go to school then you need to um, get a degree work for 40 years uh, then when you start a business then you you know then you write a book and i had to break all those things and say okay i'm gonna write a book when i'm 18 so that i'll I'll launch the book and I did that I launched the book and which which became very successful and I said I'm gonna I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and all my life is all about doing things so that other people can see that okay if, if he did it then it's possible if he did it then it's gonna be very possible so I'm that I'm that person that you know, people look at and say okay he has done this or he did that so it's very possible and, and there's no limit yeah mm, that's awesome man how old are you, my friend? <laughs> well, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna text you my age. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. I know. I, well, yeah. listen, you're very impressive. You're very impressive. Yeah. And I, I wanna, I wanna congratulate you uh, to actually getting really focused in what it is that you do, that you want to do. Uh, while you're here on this world and in this lifetime, uh, because there's a lot of people that just wander their lives like zombies, like this, mm. <laughs> and they get up every, they get up every day, and they don't know if they're coming or going, and it's a shame because there's people think that this is the life that they were handed, so they have to just live with it, where yeah that is not my frame of mind and not my belief at all i believe that you have the power to design the life of your dreams it's just a matter of mm. you finding the the right reasons behind it to actually mm. do it and it's true you know and so it uh, I, I you know it's sad and my heart goes out to you that it you know it, it took the passing of your father for you to sort of stand up brush your shoulders off, get tight and say, this is what I'm going to set out to do for the rest of my life. And, you know, it, it's, it's typically, and the reason why I asked that is because typically there was one or two defying moments in people's lives that get them to get that fired up to create their brands and that is the drive that is the force behind it all and like you said it's getting down to that and really digging that out and and exploring that which will define everything else that you do it will okay and, and go ahead Oh, sometimes you just have to go there. Like, hey, you know, when I'm, when I'm on my discovery calls with my clients, like, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's, it's half a, you know, it, it, it's digging deep into psychology. You know, why, why would somebody want this product or service? Why did you create this brand in the first place? Why do you want a new website? Why do you think it's time for a new logo? You know, those questions really unveil the true meaning to what, to why they're doing it, right? And so you gotta go there. And I know it's a fr it's scary because nobody wants to go where it's sort of uncharted territory where they think they got this, but they, they have no clue. 
<laughs> you know, I'll give you a quick example. Um, and I'm going to talk about this today yeah. in, one my, in one of my other lives. Um, so I realized that I have a fear of it's, it's fear slash sadness when it comes to uh, parting with with people. I don't like to leave and mm. I don't like people when they leave. Right. And so it was it was it was bothering me because I would be so motivated, so enthusiastic, so fired up, like 95 percent of the whole experience working with people or, or or friends or clients or whatever. Right. And then once I realized that it was about to end, I would sort of like retreat. I would like disappear. Right. Mm. And, yeah. and it was, it, and, and so I asked myself, why am I so afraid of that? Right. Yeah. And what I realized was it's that feeling of loneliness and, and I don't like to be lonely. I like when people are around me, I like when there's, when I'm interacting with people, that's when I'm most alive. And so I understood that that was the reason. The other thing was, is I wasn't accepting that that's just what life is about. You know, what gets built will eventually be destroyed. It's just life. I mean, we're not all immortal. <laughs> Right. And so looking at that and understanding that and accepting that and choosing to look at it in a more positive light, for example, now that I've worked with this client, I've impacted them in a way that they've never been impacted before. I was able to create something for them that they weren't able to do on their own. The experience I had with them was so positive because I learned so much from them right? As a unique human being that yeah. I can take that experience and now impact new clients with that or other clients with that. And so yeah. I shouldn't be focusing in on the departure, but focusing in on the positive future that that person's now going to have with their brand and the other people that I'm going to be able to impact due to that specific experience. And so now I'm able to, so the result of understanding this is when you start a project with a thousand percent enthusiasm, I am now able to complete the project with the thousand percent enthusiasm that I started with. Wow. That's wow. power. That's powerful. And that's a lot of deep, deep digging mm. that, that people don't want to go, go near. They don't want to touch it because they're afraid of it. Wow. Can, can, sorry. Can you can you talk briefly about your your book? Sure. So I yes. so the, the, the book. yeah the name of the book it's an Amazon bestseller and it's called Refuse to Give Up and it the, the subtitle is Designing the Life of Your Dreams, uh, defeating the uh, defeating the limiting beliefs and designing the life of your dreams. And the book has, it's, it's, it's an autobi autobiography, if you will. It's basically the, 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 the stepping stones of my personal life and my business career and how it all got started, how it almost went uh, bankrupt and how I brought it back to life. And there was a lot of, there's a lot of power inside the book. It talks about how, you know, one of the chapters is everything that's glitter isn't gold and gold. yeah and you know a lot of the fancy and the flashy things that i've that i saw in my life growing up that i thought i wanted as i matured and got more uh educated right i realized that like it's like that fancy stuff isn't always what uh isn't always what it, what you think it is yeah. And I always went for the fancy stuff and thinking that that was going to make me happy. And I always was out there trying to impress people 
when I really should have been trying to impress myself each day by making myself better each day, which would then ultimately affect the people that communicated with me and were around me. It was all, it was all about like that, like, and it was, it was, it was a tough way to live because if somebody didn't like me anymore, well, I rearranged my whole value system <laughs> around that. Like, it was like, I needed to make sure that I was accepted, you know, with those people um, to make myself feel better. And that was a really tough way to live. You know, wow. I did a lot of things. I did a lot of things uh, in my early 20s uh, that pissed a lot of people off in my family, my friends. I was very materialistic. You know, I thought I knew it all. You know, I was I let I let the money get to me, you know, because growing up, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't I, didn't, I wasn't one of those. I wasn't poor by any means, but yeah. we didn't have a lot of money. And when I finally got the money and was able to go on vacation, and I, I, it really got to me. You know, I really thought my shit didn't stink, you know, for lack of better words. Yeah. And yeah. that destroyed a lot of personal relationships. And so <laughs> basically the moral of the book is when things get tough, you have to refuse to give up because things will be tough throughout your life. Your life is not going to be this smooth ride. And the way you learn is through those mistakes and those lessons that those mistakes teach you. And I don't regret anything that I've done in the past. It was all stepping stones. It was all learning lessons that will make my life in the future better. Not that I'm not going to make mistakes in the future. I will. But it's taking those mistakes learning from them and designing a better future, which led to, you know, the, the, the success of the book, the success of my business, the success of now my personal life and getting that fulfillment that I was looking for for a long time. And I thought it was going to, the money was going to fulfill me, but it's not, it's the, it's the impact I'm leaving on people's lives. That's the true meaning behind Unique Designs and Henry Kaminsky. Wow. And I, I can totally relate to everything you just said, because I also went through the same phases that you're talking about. And um, I can relate to everything. This is, it, it feels like you're talking about me. I actually need to get your book. Uh, I, in fact, I'll do it today because I really need it. Um, wow. And, you know, I think one of the things that i really that really drew me to you was just your authenticity uh you know in in your brand in everything and the cleanliness as well you know today i was thinking to myself when you started I'm like oh i'm not i'm i feel underdressed because you is no he's all looking very fashionable is you know he's all looking very prepared and stuff like that and um the authenticity and the cleanliness of your brand you know if you were to um, if you were to give me one word that better describes your word, which word would that be? My what word? One word that better describes your, your brand. Oh, my brand. Yeah. Um, oh man. It's sort of like a, two, <laughs> it's, not, it's sort of like a two word punch, but yes. the, the, the word that comes to mind is impact and enhance, okay. and, and enhance right? Um, yes. but it's simplicity as well. I think when when we and that I think is what you're talking to when you say cleanliness, yes. and because you know the world is evolving at such a rapid pace, we're getting bombarded with thousands of messages a day, a, a minute, if you will, right? And what we need is more simplicity in our life. Thinking about the foundational things, you know, uh, our grandparents roamed this earth at one point <laughs> and they didn't have one tenth of what we have and what we live with. Right. And so I start to think about, you know, what would my grandmother or what would my grandfather say about this move, about this action? Right. And so sim simplifying things down makes people feel safe 
It builds confidence. It allows people to digest your messaging in an easy way. I I, I posted this on my Instagram uh, last night that was very, very, I got a great response from it. And it's, it looks like this. Right. And, and basically the boss is in the cart while everybody else is doing the work and the leader is out in front of the cart. There's nobody in the cart. He's with the other employees or the other teammates. Right. And he's pulling away with the rest of them. And the simplicity of the boss versus the leader illustration really resonated with a lot of people. And that tells me that people are starving for two things. Mm. The truth, the truth is. and simplicity. Wow. Wow. No, I, I, I'm, I have learned a lot today. Honestly, this is, this was valuable. Uh, people would pay millions for such information, but uh, you, you've given this freely to everybody who, myself and everybody who is watching. And I really, really appreciate that. And thank you very much for agreeing to do this. Thank you. Hopefully you'll come to Cape Town soon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to, I have to make plans with you so that you come to Cape Town. <laughs> and yeah, thank you very much for agreeing to do this. I Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for reaching out. It was a pleasure.